but we keep going to him, talking to his mom or um, looking around. Don't include the same scene over and over again if it doesn't add anything to the film. If you want to make us think that Kennedy's gone missing, that's fine. Maybe show him getting into a car, but then we don't see him again, and we're not sure if he's still alive. Because Nicholas Cage is always pressing, hey, we gotta find this kid. Where is he? And they just repeat the same five things over and over again to try and make a feature-length film. After the movie is done with all the potentially interesting parts, Nicolas Cage is running, and we still don't know whether or not the son-in-law survived, but then he did. They had the kid. Nicolas Cage is retired. Kenny is with them at the Nicolas Cage's birthday party at the end, and the shooting of that scene is so weird. And I'm pretty sure of the reason why. They couldn't get all the actors back together. Because Nicolas Cage is looking at... He looks over to two people who don't look like his daughter and his son-in-law. And then it switches to looking at the daughter and the son-in-law. And they're looking at nothing. Because we don't see Nicolas Cage. And then it cuts over to Kenny, who's holding a phone in the most awkward way possible just off to the side. looks like he's in a completely different area of the house. And none of the characters are in the same shot during that scene. So the movie was bad, that's for sure. But the biggest thing that I have a gripe with is the Interpol lady. The Interpol lady is shown to us in a scene where she is picked up in some Middle Eastern country trying to make a trade with what we think is another spy. And she's brought back for the military base that was attacked by the four military men. And her entire character serves no point. But she has entire scenes where it's just her doing some research. But she's never once useful to the plot. Here's her entire movements from the film. After the military operation, she goes to a gun store and she asks the gun store man, hey, have you seen this guy? He says, oh, no. And then she points to a photograph of him with the guy who is one of the army men. He says, fine, here's everything that they bought. You think that comes into play later, but it doesn't. It never comes up again. Then she goes to a warehouse where they just happen to be. And we don't know how she figured it out, but she picks up something. We don't know what it is until the scene where the cafe is blown up. She walks up to the guy who's in charge of it. And he says, listen, I don't really need you right now unless you have something to offer. She says, oh yeah, well, I found some C4 in a warehouse. And he says, wow, now you have my attention. The C4 never comes up again because we know who did it. It's the bank robbers. And they know who did it. It's the bank robbers. And you may think, oh, but they mean that they know who did it. Like it was military men who were trying to get some money back for something they were cut from. No, the military men who are robbing the bank are killed. And no one in the movie finds out why they were robbing the bank. Her finding the C4 and giving it to the police did nothing. Her inclusion is the... Is the um, character in bank movies who's like, Oh, there's more here than you know. Those people in there they're from the military you know what they're stealing diamonds that belonged to gilgamesh and then it's like whoa we find out that they're descendants of gilgamesh and that they're trying to reclaim it for macedonia but no they're just four generic army men 
who are stealing a million dollars for some generic reason. She doesn't add anything. She doesn't find out that they were doing this. She doesn't tell anyone why they were doing this. She's only added in there to make the checklist that these types of movies have. And there's nothing wrong with meeting a checklist as long as it's done in a meaningful way that connects all the elements together. But this doesn't. This makes sure it has everything, and then they just sent it into the theaters. That's all I have to say about the movie. It was really bad. If you want to watch a action heist movie where they're robbing a bank, watch Inside Man. It's better. It has these elements. It has the checklist, but they're all connected in a good way, and there's twists and there's elements involved that make the film worth watching. That makes it so much better than this film. The film, I give a 3 out of 10, but Nicholas Cage's acting, I'll give a 7 out of 10. You could tell he didn't want to be there, but he still gave it his all. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Ups and Downs of Nicholas Cage. If you want to support me, just share this with your friends and families. That's it. Or give it a five-star rating on Apple iTunes, if you think it deserves that. I think it does, but I may be a bit biased. Be sure to tune in for next episode on Monday, where we are reviewing the classic film, Matchstick Men. Again, thank you so much for listening, and have a wonderful day.